to the next season of the Direct Selling Executives Forum. I'm Gail from Nexus Marketing Team. And today it's such an exciting day because we're going to start off with our first guest who began her career as a distributor in the direct selling profession for more than 35 years ago after leaving her teaching position. She built successful personal organization, has spoken to direct sellers at conventions all over the world, consulted hundreds of companies, and held executive positions in various direct selling companies. She also co-authored best-selling books such as Build It Big and More and Build It Big 101 Insider Seekers from the Top Direct Selling Experts and has contributed to many other books and publications. In addition to her BA in Education and Business, she is a graduate of the University of Illinois Chicago Network Marketing Certification Program. She is a certified business coach with a worldwide association uh, of business coaches and is a faculty member of the DSWA Excellence School. She is also certified in emotional intelligence and behavioral intelligence. She is the CEO of Direct Selling World Alliance and her life's work is to educate and empower home-based entrepreneurs from all around the globe and inform the public about this amazing profession and field. Please welcome Nikki Keo Hoku. Awesome. Let's pass it off to Sir Ben as the moderator. So, Nikki, it's such a pleasure to have you on here today. This is our next season of the video podcast with the DSEF. I'm, I'm serving as president for the forum, and I'm so grateful to have you on as our very first speaker of this next uh, season. It's such a gift to have you here. You know, the group of executives that are in this session were uh, going through the topic of coaching leaders. And when I sat there and said, oh, my gosh, the topic's coaching leaders, Nikki. And so I, I called you and you said, yes, let's unpack this. And so today's just a special time. Yeah, this open forum is a single speaker forum. So many of you have watched previous forums. You know, we ha usually have three, four, sometimes even five direct selling executives on a forum. I love this intimate setting where it's just Gail, Nikki, and myself. We're going to have a fun time today unpacking five questions about how we coach leaders in direct sales. And so thank you so much for being here today. As a, a guest, Nikki, so grateful you dialed in from the beautiful islands of Hawaii. And I'm just so grateful uh, to have this time together. You you know, I, hearing you graduated from the University of Illinois, I'm just outside of that campus where I'm sitting today. I'm just outside of Chicago, like literally miles uh, from uh, where you had your certification uh, all those years ago. With the topic for today, as we warm up, let's let's kick it off. Where do we even start? What are the first steps you'd invite a corporate team to take as they prepare to create a framework for coaching leaders? Take us away, Nikki. Thank you. First of all, it is being aware, being aware of what even coaching is. Most people don't understand what coaching is. They think the same is training. They think it's uh, counseling. They think it's therapy. They think it's cheerleading, <laughs> all these other things. And they've got to understand what coaching really is is and oh, and bring it to their culture so what we found is if we start with the corporate executive team it can become part of the culture on an ongoing basis we have a client in australia that we've been working with for about 12 years and it is so much a part of their culture that everything that they do is based around coaching yes they have training but coaching is when someone doesn't know. I mean, they know how to do something, but for some reason they're not doing it. So they're not sure why they're not doing it, but they want to have clarity to understand how they can support somebody to get through whatever that thing is. It's just like if maybe you have a real good sponsoring culture, you've got people that are building teams and doing really well. Well, there are people that know how to sponsor and they're not doing it. So what most companies do is they tell them again, here's how to sponsor. Yeah, I aren't getting it. You know, come <laughs> come do it with me. Come watch me. I'll do a three-way with you. So they keep trying to tell them what to do. And that's not what's needed anymore. It's really about knowing what's behind the curtain. You know, I say coaching is the bridge to take people from where they are to where they choose to be. It's like on this bridge, under the bridge, under sponsoring, why people aren't sponsoring, what's down there is all the fears, fear of success, fear of failure, mm -hmm. fear of responsibility, fear of no, there's a bunch of them, but we just keep training them and we've got to get this coaching culture 
into the whole group. So the corporate people are using it within internally and the field people are using it as particularly the leaders are using it with their teams. So that's what I really believe is necessary to happen. It's that bridge. We got to hear that note. Everyone's taking notes. Let's un let's unpack that thought a little bit further before we move on to the next question. It's I've heard the read the book, the question behind the question, the QBQ, right? And we think of like, hey, you know, it's not always just modeling behavior because you're you're right, Nikki. What our default as leaders is, oh, I, I must have failed in modeling the appropriate behavior. It must have been me. I mean, they're not getting it, so yeah. I must have been a bad model. Let's, let's model that one more time. And you're like, no, 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 no. They got the model. It's the question behind the question. So it's awareness is the first step is what I heard. And, yes. and so, man, man, that's a, that's a great framework, gang. You gotta, gotta hear what Nikki was really saying there, because I think so many times the temptation is to just go back to, oh, let's model that a different way. Maybe they'll get it this time. <laughs> so you mm -hmm. think you can, mm, I think we can see ourselves there. Let's move to this thought because I think we get stuck sometimes. What pitfalls have you seen, even this last year, that you'd encourage corporate teams to avoid as they think about this framework and how they coach leaders? I'd say not just in the last year. It's been for a while <laughs> and, and all through COVID especially. Oh. I, I think people thought the answer was give more incentives, give more um, you know, information. See, it's my belief that information doesn't create transformation in people. Hmm. Information does not create transformation. Information that is applied, utilized, understood, creates transformation in people. That's so good. example, when, again, I'll go to recruiting, because right now there's a lot of companies really worried sure. about recruiting. The recruiting is down, and they're wanting people to recruit more but they're not working on the mindset mm -hmm. around recruiting. Mm -hmm. And until we clear up those limiting beliefs, people are still not going to do it. I, I just finished a course, um, a level one class for coaching for, for the field. And, and this woman that was in the class, she said, I used to be the number one recruiter in the company, number one. And she said, I, I'm no longer the number one recruiter. I'm not even in the top five. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what do you think happened? She said, well, I stopped recruiting. Now you don't ask why questions. So you uh, ask a who, what, when, where, what question, who, what, when, where, how question. And so I said, well, what do you think that's about that you stopped recruiting? She said, I, I, I thought that I was like being a, a, a fraud because I'm not really that successful in business. So I felt like I was selling something that didn't, wasn't going to deliver to the people. And I didn't want to do that. So we circled around that whole thing. Now she's back recruiting and she's, she's doing very, very well. But sometimes people get a thought like I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. And nobody's going to listen to me even if they've done it before. So we've got to reframe some of these thoughts that are going on in their head to get them back to doing what they know how to do. They just had a limiting belief, a thought that prevented them from doing it. So in the last year, I, I, I noticed, you know, companies are really trying their best to keep their people going. And sometimes throwing incentives at people doesn't, necessarily change what's going on so my hope is, is that people will institute a coaching culture and begin utilizing those skills so that they can have people that that choose to get past where they are and and again begin to believe in themselves you know it's so good about what nikki's saying gang any of you on the line that are parents i think you're going to get this quickly nikki's saying that we as executives and direct sales companies have treated these challenges we're facing from you know, and everything next, like you would with a small child who's just off track. And you're like, here's a candy bar, get back on track. I'll give you this candy bar. If you get back on track or here's some ice cream, get back on track. All of us know that doesn't work with a small child. Like you sit down first and you put them on your lap you look in their eyes and you say, honey, what's going on? 
like, how's your heart doing? How are you feeling? That's what, that's what you're hearing here from Nikki gang. It's like, Hey, before you jump into the next incentive, juju trip to Baja, whatever gang, one second, did you first take the time to ask, Hey, what's, what's going on for you? Hey, and this notice that stuff's changed in your world. How are you actually doing? And, and that listening, that's a relationship that means so much more than one more trip to one more destination. I mean, you, you got to hear that's, that. It's interesting that you say that because we say in our courses that you're going to learn just as much about how to deal with your family, your sure. spouse, your children as you do in the business. And everybody says, man, I, I get it. I've applied it there. And it's made a huge difference. Yeah. But another interesting part of what you just said is that there are people that keep thinking they know what to do. They should just go do it. And maybe that is true, but we got to understand the reason they're not. There's something behind that curtain. And to discover that is a critical thing. In listening, that's how you follow the thread of what's said in coaching. So you listen to their response so that you know what question to ask next. And coaching, heart-centered listening is a skill that most people are not taught. You know, as kid, little kids will say, you're not listening, you're not listening, you know, and but we never teach them really how to listen, how to be 100% present, how to put your blinders on and just be with you. They they don't know. So leaders can be good listeners. It doesn't mean people go on and on and on and tell you all their problems. That's not what I'm saying. It's you listen to know how to navigate this to support them to move on. Coaching is about today going forward. It isn't about the past. It's not, we don't talk a lot about the past. We might just ask, where did that belief come from? And then they realize, God, that belief has nothing to do with today. So, but we don't do a lot in the past. It's all about going forward. And boy, if you can move a team, I know there are people listening to this that have legacy leaders in their company. And many times they've just gotten comfortable and they um, stop doing what they did when they first came in the business. And sometimes they'll just take their check and, and move on. What would happen if you could get a fire under those people again? How would that affect your business? How would that affect their life? So, and coaching is the answer for that. Mm -hmm. Team, action steps, action steps. You know what? So many times I think that executives uh, think about concepts like this and your mind kind of runs wild. You know, at times, Nikki, you sit there and you say like, oh my gosh, all these things I have to get done. And uh, one of the books I've just appreciated the most over the last few years is uh, Gary Keller, founder of Keller Williams book. The one thing he always asks that question is like, what's the one thing I can do today that makes anything else just not even necessary or not needed anymore in my life. So I can, I can focus on what turns the, turns the dial. I wanted to ask that one thing question just from all your experience. You've, you coach groups in, in some of the top 20 direct selling companies in the world. And so if, if there was only one new practice that a team at corporate was going to had the bandwidth to deploy, right? What would you suggest they deploy? We're looking at coaching leaders. What would that be? A coaching program, a coaching <laughs> culture. I, I, because it will save them so much time and headache. Because when people are kind of stuck or they've lost their vision or they've lost their emotional why or they, they've lost their purpose, it's like dragging them on to success mm -hmm. versus inviting them and welcoming them in. It massively affects people's mental attitude for your internal team and for your field when they feel there's not somebody there to fix them because the coaching is not fixing people. They're not broken. We hold people as whole and complete as they are. They're not broken. So as we hold people as whole and complete, we look for ways to support them to move forward. Hmm. And anybody can learn this. I'll flat out say I was a horrible coach when I started this. <laughs> I, I really was. I, I, and, and there wasn't a lot of like a pathway to how to teach it. But I was like, you know, you need to get this done. When are you going to get it done? That was kind of my old style. And I have found that 
people are empowered when you use empowering language with them. Mm. And by the way, there are only five skills to coaching. Only five. It's not like it's a ton of information. There's five skills. Empowering and powerful questions, heart-centered listening, compassionate feedback. And by the way, in business schools, they're still teaching how to give constructive criticism and it doesn't work. It's still criticism. Compassionate feedback is a whole different deal. And that's only when you, somebody has a blind spot. That's the only time you use that. The fourth skill is called agreed action and accountability that people agree to an action and they're accountable for self. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. And the final skill is called ICU acknowledgement. You acknowledge people for their qualities, not for what they did. It kind of bothers me because I go to a lot of conventions and things and, mm. and, and I'll hear them at awards night. Top in sales is so-and-so, but they don't acknowledge the being. Yeah. See, I want people in that audience to see themselves up there. So yeah. Susie is top in sales because of the way she values her customers. She is very yeah. focused on being of service. Use quality words. It will impact more people. And they go, golly, I... I really am a servant leader. I care about my customers. Sure. They can see themselves up there. Yeah. And there's yeah. just little things that can make a difference. That's why whenever I speak at a convention, I stay the entire time. And I tell, if they want it, I tell the company, I'm happy to to do take notes throughout the whole thing of opportunities for something to be improved or better and all the great things that are working. And as I'm coaching people at that conference, I'm hearing patterns. I would never say, Susie said this. I would say, there's a pattern. There's some discomfort around this. Mm. It's really to support the people. But I also learn while I'm there and I love to learn. Mm. That's, that's such a powerful thought. You know, you think about like, hey, you know, Julie's chosen to be grateful no matter how her day's going. Look at how she's accomplished this X, Y, Z goal even though this health challenge was going on in her life or this thing was going on with her family or, you know, she's one of my favorite uh, songs to share when someone wins a big award and in different organizations is uh, Mendisa's overcomer, right? I love that song. It talks about the, the woman who's the overcomer and look how she overcame uh, the challenge uh, that they face. And so I, I love bringing music into those qualities that you just talked about, mm -hmm. uh, Nikki, it's such a powerful thought. And, you know, sometimes we think of our walk on music for awards gang being, you know, whatever hip single for whatever you wanted. And some you can bring us back to some of the songs about the qualities guys. You can have a lot of fun with that uh, leaders as you see that, you know, there's, there's, there's a great way to listen and love others that way. S speak, speaking of events, I want to turn the coaching conversation to something that we get asked about all the time, Nikki, and you go to so many physical events, like perfect time to ask. Mm -hmm. So here we are, 2023, COVID was 2020, um, with all the conversations about building businesses remotely versus physical events, what's been your perspective on physical connections today? I think people are hungry to reconnect. <laughs> I think people yeah. are a little bit tired of being in front of their computer and want to be with people. And I believe that at live events, there's a so much opportunity to learn from one another. And especially if you have some purposeful little icebreakers where they connect with other people and write down what they've mm -hmm. said, things like that. So they are, aren't afraid. They have a purpose of walking up to that person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think that Zoom and, and uh, virtual learning has been a good thing. And we were very fortunate that we had it sure. during that time. But I think people are okay now getting back with other folks. And and I've noticed in the last month how many more people are starting to call and sure. say, you know, part of that, part of that is what was happening on these virtual events. I know it was less money for the company. And mm -hmm. and they thought that was a big deal. Um, and they were utilizing their their field, their top leaders to do a lot of the training. And the top leaders are going, when's our turn? You know, when am I going to get to learn? I'm giving, giving, giving. And so I think it's time to get back and orchestrating events that empower the people that are there and support them to connect with one another and feel part of the community. 
See, community is a feeling. That's one of our pillars that we teach in our leadership course is building community, creating community, because people want to belong. They want to feel something when they go there. And it is harder over electronic to get a feeling across. I mean, I'm glad we had it and everybody embraced it and we got through it because it wasn't safe. But I feel that we're past that now. And I'm hoping that people start to realize the importance of putting people in small groups big groups and getting them to really get to know you the company owner how you see the world how you embrace the people and care about them and what your vision is for the future because if we don't share that vision they're guessing and they're not sure if your thought is to to just you know be acquired and get out of here as quick as I can and run with the money. They don't like that. They sure. want to know that you have here and that you care. I, I love that we talked about getting conventions back. And one of the things that in addition to conventions I've seen is is we've seen a transition of people, you know, the selling happening online. But I, I have clients who've grown really fast where I see that the they're not doing physical in person um, opportunity presentations as much as they are, but they are doing physical in person celebrations and hangouts and learning time. So they're, I'm seeing a lot of where people are using tools and systems to get out samples of product or enroll customers or webinars to close, but they're still getting together physically to celebrate one another, still getting together physically to learn from one another, to hold each other accountable, to have a, a breakfast together and a meetup or to rent some huge house on Airbnb and do a mastermind and have fun. I'm I'm seeing that happen again and it's creating great community and culture. In addition to your your solid point, Nikki, about getting convention back in person, those moments for this business to move from your head to your heart that are just so critical uh, to duplication and growing gang in the space. So don't, don't miss out on that. You know, as we wrap the section of our video podcast today, gang, there was one question we always ask um, anyone that we interact with on the podcast at the end. And the question is that if you could go back 10 years, knowing all you know now, Oh, what would you tell yourself? What's the one thought you'd share with yourself? Nick, you've seen a lot. What would you say? I've seen a lot. And, you know, 10 years, a lot has happened in our profession in the last 10 years. And we've gone through trends and good, bad, and ugly. And um, in the beginning, I wasn't doing much consulting. And, and I thought, well, there's lots of consultants out there that can do it. But I think there's some real power in having people that have been there and done that as part of your team or your advisory board. You know, I decided I I have a real opportunity to contribute on advisory boards because sometimes they'll hire people from Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, but they don't (laughs) understand our world. And so I would have said those things earlier. Yeah. And let people know that that we do that kind of work because I want people to be successful. Every time a direct selling company goes out of business, it hurts all of us. It hurts all of us. And sometimes people listen to the wrong people. They need they need people that know what's going on today in the field and how the field is reacting to things and what they're looking for. So I would have spoke up sooner. Yeah. And brought co- the coaching culture into more companies earlier. You know, you get busy running, you know, your association. You got a lot of things to do. Um, I just, I know that there's some real opportunity out there to increase longevity of companies and increase profitability and success for the field. And I just really want to be a part of that. I, I love that, Nikki. Building the right board gang is so key as you grow to the next level. Just like any business, every next level you get to, it's a different business. There's the timeless principles that are the same, but then there's the the timely things that change at each level. And when you can have people on your board who have been there and done that, it is a literal game changer in your world. And with that, if, you, if you're watching the stream today and you're you're on listening on audio or you're on the YouTube channel, you're not in the active DSEF forum, uh, the Direct Selling Executives Forum is an invite-only forum that's free for direct selling executives here in the space. If you haven't yet joined the forum, I encourage you to go into the description, uh, join on your favorite social network. We're, we're very active on both LinkedIn and Facebook. It's a private invite-only group. You can apply to join. 
Um, the moderators always are vetting that, yes, you are a direct selling executive and are active in the space because we all want to learn from each other. And so um, we invite you that if you're not yet a member of either of the groups or both the groups to join today, it's absolutely free and is a perfect place for you to access additional education and open forums just like this one today. But I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Nikki, to have you here today. This is such a gift. Uh, you, you've just poured out with such a legacy to know you and uh, your daughter, Grace, over the years has been just an honor. I enjoy every conversation we get to have together. And I was just so grateful to have you here and kicking off this next season. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you so much, Ben and Gail. I appreciate your introduction. Take care. You got it. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Nikki. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.